Okay, we are live currently on YouTube. I think Rituja can st start. Hello. Yeah, you are perfectly audible. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Rutuja Surve. I currently am working as an AI engineer with Gina AI. And today I'll be talking about this open source project that helps us do neural search on different types of data across different modalities. So starting with what is Gina? Gina is a new state of the art design pattern for search workflows, which allows users to leverage the latest deep learning models out of the box and deploy wherever they want to. To describe in more detail, Gina is basically a search framework which is universal in nature. In the sense, we support different types of data and different types of models. We could use it for doing an image search, text search, audio search, video search across different modalities and plug in different types of frameworks and different, different types of encoders for carrying out the search. It's cloud native in nature. We currently have support for AWS. And in future, we'll also be supporting Google Cloud and Azure, making it cloud agnostic. It's definitely a time saver that helps developers save a lot of their time while actually using any pre-trained model in their search workflow. So Gina is basically a one-stop cloud native solution for search in production. We support different modalities of search and also support cross-modal search. So to describe in more detail, Gina is a solution for supporting different modes of search. An example for this is cross-modal search. So given a text input, Gina provides an image output. Or given an image input, Gina can also provide a text output. So across different modalities, similarly, you can search for audio using video, video using text, and so on and so forth. So this is an example of cross-modal search. And it also allows for multimodal search. So in multimodal search, a search query can be composed of two different types of modalities. For example, using an image plus text, we can search for images. So this is one such example on the Fashion 200K data set. And this happens across different stages of the search workflow. So I'll be talking in detail about uh, the search workflow that Gina provides. So a typical search engine would work in different stages. And each of these stages, right from the input of different documents at scale to the ranked results, runs across each of these stages, including crafting, encoding, indexing and retrieving the ranked results. So let's go in detail for each of these stages. So beginning with the crafting stage. So a crafter is something that helps us convert the data into smaller chunks. For example, converting a document into paragraphs, paragraphs into sentences, sentences into words, and also linking the metadata for each of these chunks. So after this comes the encode phase where 
the data is encoded in embeddings and converted into a vector so that's where the encoding comes into picture and each of this small piece of information like each of this each of uh, the chunk here is associated with an index called the chunk id and each of these chunks would then map to the corresponding document from which this chunk was retrieved so to summarize basically each document is broken down into different chunks each chunk has an id associated with it it has a vector representation which is an embedding associated with it and each chunk in turn is a part of a document so it maps to its parent document id and there is some metadata associated with each of these chunks secondly we have a separate document index which corresponds to the main parent to which any chunk would belong so in gina document is the main uh, data type where in turn it's recursively composed of multiple documents each of uh, which belongs to this particular parent for example like i said there are different levels at which the chunks work and this makes the document a recursive data structure stored in the format of a tree internally so the tech stack that gina uses is lightweight we use protobufs grpcs zero mq for communication numpy and tornado so across different stages of the search workflow uh basically zero mq is used for communicating across the different pods or the executors so each of these components like the crafter the segmenter the encoder and the indexer are called executors in the gina language and they are wrapped inside a pod following a microservice kind of an architecture and these pods communicate with each other using zero mq messaging queues and it is possible to query data using rest queries or by using gina box which is like an interface a gui for querying also each of these components or each of these executors in turn are split into p's so in order to make the process faster input data is split between p's this is called sharding for making it distributed in nature secondly in case any of these p's fails there is backup so gina also supports parallelism where each pod is composed of multiple p's and this p in turn is wrapped up in an executor an executor is the basic functionality that tells the p what to do and this executor expects data to be in a particular format so the driver does the job of translating that to the executor so that's how data comes in and out of the executor so to summarize the gina core components we have different stages of the search workflow beginning with crafting which does some basic transformations on the data segments the data breaks it down into smaller chunks followed by encoding that converts the data into vector representations represents chunk as a vector array followed by indexing so indexing is the actual phase where Uh, the key value information is persisted uh, vectors and their chunk ids are stored and then during query we also have a ranker which is used for sorting the results and displaying the query results so yeah this is a basic summary of the architecture so we have uh, a grpc uh, based architecture that's used for indexing and persisting data secondly while querying 
we can query via a curl command, simple curl command, and retrieve different ranked results. So uh, all these pods or all these executors need to be context managed, for which Gina provides a very simple API called the flow API. So at different stages of the search workflow, this microservice design making the whole pipeline flexible and scalable is accomplished using Flow API, which helps in orchestrating the pods. So Flow is like a context manager for pods, and each Flow object corresponds to a real world task. And it's possible to define a Flow using either a Python code snippet or in the form of a YAML file, or using interactive graphs in the form of a dashboard. And this way, the users don't need to bother about how the pod is running, where the pod is running, how the pods are interconnected. The flow takes care of all this. So yeah, basically, we have um, a user-facing interface called the Gina box, where the user will search for different types of queries. And if the user wants to analyze the logs and track the progress of different tasks, we have a dashboard that helps you do, helps you track the progress of ranking and indexing and so on. And this is the core where the different pods are running, the storage where the data is persisted. And yeah, this is the input of the trained model. Yeah, so uh, I'd next like to play a sample demo of long document live search using Gina. So yeah, I just need some permission for playing this. So uh, can you, oh, okay, okay. So, Amdith, can you give the user permission to uh, play the video? Or I can play it in the end after you've granted access. I'll move on to demonstrating a basic Hello World example using the Gina flow. So using a simple Python snippet, it's possible to define flow in Gina. It's just a simple import of Gina flow. And we add different types of pods to this flow by a simple add method and specify the type of executor that we want to add to the flow. For example, uh, CNN encoding is the encoder that we want the flow to use. Then this is the indexer that we wish to use in this flow. And then we just call f.index, which will index the documents. And we can further add few optimizations while adding pods to the flow. For example, we can add parallelism by defining the parallel configuration. We can also add shards for faster computation, splitting across the computation among different shards, and parallelization for backup and recovery. It's also possible to use a remote Docker image in the sense that we can specify the particular encoder here using its Docker image and the host. We can also concat different types of embeddings uh, in the sense if we want to use two types of encoders, for example, CNN followed by ResNet, we can concat them and use them parallelly and then follow it through the other pods like the indexer pod. 
so just like we used a simple python snippet for implementing the flow it is also possible to have the same flow implemented via a yaml file or through jina dashboard so in the yaml specification we just define a simple flow specifying the different pods like the encode pod here followed by the index pod and use certain environment variables to map the path correctly to define number of parallel replicas and the number of shards or use the dashboard where you can very easily define the different pods and interconnect them have a parallel and a sequential flow so by far we looked at how the index flow works where we need at least two pods which is the encode and the index pod and we can optimize it further by adding a crafter as the first pod followed by the encoder and the indexer in the query flow we have a ranker as well and it's also possible to specify polling strategies and reducing strategies expose ports allow request using this so yeah this summarizes the flow api flow api is flow api is basically a context manager that manages states and context for all pods using three different ways either a python snippet or a yaml file or a dashboard jina supports search across cross and multi modalities and what's common across all types of modalities may be text image audio or video is the input function which is always a byte buffer and using the flow api as we saw previously we can just call the index or the search function after specifying the pod flow and query easily using flow and use crafter for different types of input for example if you specify a pdf file then there's a pdf extractor that will do the crafting that will try to separate out images and text from the pdfs and so on then i'll also try to briefly talk about how internally a document is traversed in jina so there are two important concepts here one is that of granularity and the second is that of adjacency so by granularity we mean that when we have a document as we split it into chunks we are going down the granularity and making it even more fine and when we break it into chunks for each of the chunks we find out similar chunks so similar chunks mean meaning the two chunks are adjacent to each other so this introduces the concept of adjacency or matches so here the green blocks signify the matches the yellow blocks signify the chunks so this is the granularity level and this is at the same depth the adjacency level that we are looking at and internally it can be a document could be represented as a tree as a recursive document structure so document traversal looks somewhat like this so beginning with g equal to 0 a equal to 0 we go down at level 1 breaking it into chunks then we look at the matches for this document then at the chunk level we again search for matches and so on and so forth also one flexibility that jina provides is searching at different levels in the sense for example if we have an image of a car we can do a search either at the main image level or as we break it down into chunks as we get a zoomed in image of this car we can look for matches at different levels for example here we can find images similar at different granularities while searching so we have a jina ai's jina core repository where a lot of issues are listed so in case you want to contribute to jina 
please feel free to check out our github repo and there are few beginner friendly issues that could help you get started please free please feel free to also join our slack channel where you can get help from our developers and to learn more about gina uh, these are the different platforms where you can reach out to us and ask us any questions do check out uh, our website and how the first gina app can be implemented and yeah that's it from my end i would like definitely want to answer any questions that you have here okay there is there a slack channel or something like that for asking questions and stuff yeah there is a slack channel uh slack.gina.ai is the slack channel where okay okay yeah users can i think it was there on the last slide yeah i'll just reshare again okay uh, can can we have a visual of one of your apps yeah i just need the permission to play the video yeah i think i have made you the host and you have the permission okay uh rutuja can you please check your audio yeah can you hear me now yeah i can hear you but i can't hear the video okay one second
ओके या सो दैट वाज अ बेसिक डेमो ऑफ हाउ डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सर्च कुड बी परफॉर्म्ड विद जीना सो यू बेसिकली गिव अ ट्रांसक्रिप्ट टेक्स्ट फॉर इट टू आइडेंटिफाई एंड इट रिकॉग्नाइजेस एंड lists all the songs that contain those lyrics here yeah hmm that's cool that's actually cool do you have a, a function for taking in the audio and then transcribing it uh, automatically and then searching for the song yeah so i'll just share a link of our github repo yeah sure sure and everything here is completely open source right yes yes yeah anyone from uh, the youtube channel or the attendees page if anyone has any questions you are free to question so this is an example of audio data based uh, neural search where given a set of files uh, of audio data you can just drop in a file that you would want to search for in the gina box and then this does the searching and retrieves audio results so this is one such example for audio search so you can check out the gina ai examples repo where there are a bunch of good examples on different types of search like cross modal search pest search fashion example query and so on similarly cross modal search is one type of implementation using the vsc encoder that helps uh, search across different modalities like search for images using text text using images and so on and this is a detail overview of how the index and the query flows run and it's possible to build docker images for each of these executors and use it across different types of data sets like an 8000 image data set or an 80000 image data set of flickr model so can we individually contribute to these examples yes yes you can so feel free to check out all the repos under uh, the gina ai org so here our core repo is the gina repo that has different executors drivers and so on implemented and here you can find out, you can find different issues here few good good first issue tagged issues could be a good starting point to begin contributing and there are different uh, sort of uh, guidelines for contributing that you can check out here apart from that uh, also please feel free to check out the gina box which is uh the dashboard implement which is the implementation for uh searching or querying and the dashboard that's used that's used for tracking the progress of the indexing also to see the different types of logs and a good first start would be exploring the examples repo I think uh, the contributors could have gained a lot during the Hacktoberfest, although it's over right now. Anyway. Yeah. And I'm sure that you would have had a lot of contributions from the contributors side last month. Yes. Yes. So okay, guys. I think we have reached the end of the session. If any of you have any questions, feel free to ask. 
uh, you can ask them in the chat window here on the Zoom panel as well as in the YouTube show notes. Okay, so I don't think any one of us has any questions. Uh, I'd be really thankful to Rutuja for actually being on the conference. And we were actually proud to have you here. To Thank talk you about so much. GD. Okay, so guys, we'll be proceeding with the next event, which is the live streaming of the New Rips live cast, which will be a watch party. And we'll begin in about three, four minutes. So please bear with us. <laughs> 